All right, our next guest, he's a screenwriter, he's an actor, and he's even a musician. My good friend, Victor Carluccio. <laughs> Victor. What's up, pal? Hi, Victor. Ah, oh, what a gentleman. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, here comes the clipper. That's it. <laughs> How was your trip down here? Majestic. Yeah? Majestic, coming, yeah. coming from Manhattan, right? Yeah, no matter how many times I ride that ferry, you know, it's breathtaking every time, you know. So what's going on? You just finished two films? Yeah, I finished right? um, a Chinese uh, puzzle with uh, a French film director, uh, Cedric uh, Clapish. Mm -hmm. And it's an interesting film. It's a part of a uh, trilogy that takes place over uh, almost 30 years. Every 10 years or so, you know, seven, 10 years, he brings the same actors back and continues the story. Oh, really? And so you actually see these actors, you know, uh, grow, growing up. It's kind of like um, uh, an artistic version uh, of Harry Potter in a way. You know, <laughs> you've seen these, those kids grow up, but it's, it's a good story. The other one is uh, Long Short Louis. Oh, yeah, Talk yeah. Talk about that. That's um, uh, Soprano star uh, Johnny uh, Bianco. Bianco's in it? Yeah, he oh, wrote cool. it, he directed it. Oh, nice guy. And, yeah, yeah, and he's, uh, you know, I was surprised that um, his uh, directorial skills, um, usually when an actor um, directs, they'll kind of give uh, other actors line readings or their interpretation mm -hmm. of what they want out of the scene where uh, he really did it like a director, you know, discussed the scene with you, gave you the inner thought, um, a background on the character, and, um, you know, so it was actually, I was a little nervous. I, I, I yeah. really don't like working with um, directors that were actors. I've had, you know, some bad experiences, but he, uh, it was one of the smallest crews I've ever worked with. But um, I say all pro, no ego with it. No, uh, definitely. Yeah. I sat down with him about a year ago about some, some stuff, and yeah, he's definitely a, a perfectionist. He's a pro. Yeah. N you know, his ego's aside. All pro, no ego, yeah. <laughs> now, listen, you got a great story about to uh, Tony Curtis, the, the legend. Yeah, you know what? Talk I, about that. Uh, everyone asked me, you know, w one of the highlights uh, uh, of my career, and uh, I wrote Summer of Sam for Spike Lee. Yeah. On stage, I played opposite George C. Scott on film. I played opposite De Niro, Denzel Washington. Tony Danza. Tony Danza, Jodie Foster, Uma Thurman, Christopher Plummer. And, you know, those are good names. But uh, for me, the most thrilling, the highlight was meeting Tony Curtis. I had a friend of mine producing a, a film he was in, and she invited me to lunch, and I met her on the set. And um, Tony Curtis was in his 70s. Yeah. And he points say. to me, and he said, uh, I want him for my stand-in. He had a, a guy his age with gray hair. And I uh, didn't like that, so I agreed to do it, and I learned how to imitate him. And, and he personally picked you. Yeah, he says, he says I look more like him. <laughs> and uh, so I said, all right, you know, I'll, I'll do it. And um, I learned how to imitate Let his voice. Hear. Well, I would go around the set complaining. I go, uh, I don't like my dressing room. Uh, get my agent on the phone. I quit, I quit. <laughs> and people would go nuts. And for you young kids who don't know uh, who Tony Curtis is, take Brad Pitt, George yeah. Clooney. Put him together with a little dash of Elvis, and you got Tony he was Curtis. A, he was the hot father back in the oh, day. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he's actually a good actor, yeah, Oscar very good winner actor. for. Yeah. So, anyway, I would complain, uh, I don't like my wardrobe. Uh, get my agent on the phone. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, one day, the prop man is putting props on uh, Tony, uh, Tony Curtis's uh, character's desk. The character's name is Max. And it's putting takeout food. And Tony Curtis looks, he goes, uh, my character does not do takeout. <laughs> so without looking, the prop man goes, would you cut that shit out already? You're driving everybody nuts. And he turns around, it's Tony Curtis. Now he's really mad. Uh, why is he talking that way to me? <laughs> so now a whole big deal happens. And uh, the ADs and everyone, they, they, they had to explain to him I'm impersonating. So he wanted to hear me impersonate him. And I say, well, you know when you're on the Flintstones, uh, Wilma won you, Stony Curtis, slave boy for a week? Yes. And you knock on the door, and she opens it up, and you go, uh, hi, Wilma, I'm Stony Curtis. I'm your slave boy for the week, <laughs> right? So he says that, and he looks at me, he goes, uh, that's awful. Uh, <laughs> I don't sound anything like that at all. That's awful. That's <laughs> awful. <laughs> I can't imagine him as, a, as uh, a, everybody gets old, but, you know. Well, you know what I found interesting, you know, um, as far as actors, you know, compared uh, back then to today, although he did win an Oscar, he was always considered a, 
a movie star, not a real actor. Yeah. And when I was working with him, what he would do was he'd write down his, uh, his uh, dialogue in front of him on the wall, and he would listen to the other actor. And then when he realized it was his cue, he'd look to the side, look this way, look down, pause, read his line, you know, get his line, and say it. And I thought, wow, this is um, kind of terrible acting. But when I saw the movie came out, and they edited out all that stuff. He had the best performance in the script. Yeah. I mean, this guy's such a master that he, he's, he's editing the film as he's acting, you know? Yeah, so. well, that's how the old timers used to do it. Yeah, yeah. Now, it's like, I got something very interesting I, I saw in your bio. Uh, you worked with the legend Gary Marshall, right? Oh, yeah, in yeah. In a play, what is this? Uh, uh, Wrong Turn at Long, at Long Fish. Fish. George C. Scott, Tony Danza. Yeah, why don't you talk about that? Well, uh, my wife was in labor at the time in a snowstorm in February when uh, my agent called me up. Mm -hmm. And I says, I can't, I can't, you know, I can't uh, go to an audition. So my wife is like, look, look, would you just go? You drive me crazy. So I called up and I said, all right, I'll go. But as soon as I get to the theater, I says, I want to go on. I don't care what number. I said, otherwise I'm going to leave. Right. So they let me go up and I'm in the middle of the audition and uh, Gary Marshall says, okay, that's, that's, that's it. I've seen enough. So now I'm mad, you know. It cuts me off halfway through. I says, hey, look, Mr. La La. You know, I don't know, I know Mr. Marshall. I don't know what they do out there <laughs> in La La Land, but you're, you're on New York stage right now. When I'm a New York stage actor. In New York, we let our actors, you know, finish before we tell them to go themselves. I said, so why don't you go? And he says, whoa, 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 whoa. Isn't your wife having a baby? I said, yeah. He says, well, go home. You got the part. Like, oh, thank you, Mr. Marshall, you know. That's great. But, no, that's yeah. nice on your wife's part for letting you go. Yeah, well, she said I was making her nervous. Like, is it time yet? Is it time yet? And, you know, I was really, really, really yeah, very he's nervous. He's the man. I met Penny Marshall about a month ago. Nice lady. Oh. Uh, well, my, my daughter, she was born six, six weeks late. I'm finally able to take her out. So uh -huh. I put her in one of those baby papooses. Right. And um, I, I bring her down. and. Tony Danza missed the show, so I went on for him. And uh, George C. Scott tells me, you're his understudy. you got to do everything he does. That means you drink with me in between shows. Oh, shit. Oh, so he takes me to the bar, and uh, he said, what do you have? I says, I'll take an Amstel Light. So he said, Amstel Light, I invited you for a drink, not a soda pop. I says, well, I'm not as good of an actor as you. Give me a few years. I'll work my way up to the vodka. And I says, and that reminds me, why do you got to drink vodka? You shouldn't drink vodka anymore. And he goes, well, now you sound like my wife and the producers. Why shouldn't I drink vodka? I says, well, because behind your back, I call you George C. Scotch. And every time you go for the vodka, <laughs> it blows my joke, you know? <laughs> so then he tells me, you got to go to the bathroom. I says, no. He says, you do, I do. You got to go. So we're down in the men's room, and we're both like this. He looks over, sees me with the baby in the papoose. He goes, oh, my god, you're wearing the baby. He covers her eyes up. <laughs> oh, it caused the trauma. Oh, I tell you, he was, he was a great guy to work with, a master, too, in his craft. Aww. Yeah. But listen, Vic, that's your time. Where can people get in touch with you on the Internet? Um, the best place is Facebook, and that reminds me, if my ex-wife is watching this, I haven't gotten my alimony check this month. What's taking you so long? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, Vic Colicchio. All right. Thank you. Watch out for the coat. Oh. Oh. Order. Order in Johnny's courtroom. Order my court.